I am very privileged um, to be here with you today. My name is Patricia Grant. I have the privilege of being the uh, dean of our undergraduate business program. And today is a very special day. I know you know that because you're here. There's a lot of excitement in the room. There's a big wow uh, oh, uh, step and repeat That's over there. That's and good. I love that, you know, yeah, yeah. Little, sure. little branding for yeah. our marketing folks in the room. Um, <laughs> So we're here really because diversity matters, because it's important to have as many voices as possible speaking on as many things as possible. And the panel that we will hear this evening is going to exemplify that in true Georgetown McDonough fashion. It is so important that we have this panel um, I'm surprised, not surprised, but delighted that Jimmy, really, for those of you who don't know Jimmy Lin, you will soon get to know him even better, that you know, he was able to, to really help us um, pull together such an august panel uh, of leaders in sports to really share some insights um, from their perspective. And, I'm not gonna be before you much longer, but I do wanna highlight one thing that's really important. This year marks the 60th anniversary of women graduating from the business school. How many of you knew that? Okay, a fair number. Well, for the rest of you, you will soon be invited to many, many events that highlight that very important fact. And it's, it's something that we're incredibly proud of uh, as a school of business. It's important that we think about not only who is invited to be a part of the conversation, but who is made to feel like they belong and have something meaningful to add to the conversation. So that's what we're here to do today, to talk about making some noise. <laughs> that's, that's my best announcer voice. And without further ado, on behalf of the McDonough School of Business, it's my honor to, um, to turn, off, turn over the mantle to um, Jimmy Lin, one of our professors in marketing, and so much more. Jimmy Lin. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dean Grant. Thank you to our marketing chair, Dr. Hamilton. We have a coach and staff, Coach Howard and Coach Geckler. We've got a bunch of student athletes here from the football team and women's basketball team and the field hockey and lacrosse, a great, great turnout. A special thanks to my dear friend, Stephanie Jujokin. Stand up in the back and wave. Yay, Steph. Yay, Steph. So we've been friends for over 20 years. Uh, she used to run the Wizards dance team and the Redskins dance team, and now she's been put in charge of this great organization called WOW, the Women of Washington. So when we first met a couple months ago, I said, man, how about doing an event at the McDonough School of Business? And she saw this room, she's like, I love this room. I said, how about if we go with all female sports execs? And said, wow, let's do it. So it's great that the, the night is here. And so um, let me do a quick introduction. And just for timing, we have from now until 6 o'clock. And then we have a Q&A from 6 to 6.15. And then everyone has agreed to stay till 7, uh, from 6.15 to 7, so they can meet you and, and uh, interact with you. Also, thank you, Maya from Cooper. And then we have a special guest, Abir, who I met, who is an Olympic athlete from Egypt, was here for the sport for the Humanity Conference. Wave. Yeah. Uh -huh. she, she's a, a Taekwondo expert, so any of you football boys mouth off. <laughs> be careful. <laughs> Coach Gar won't be. No, but it's great to have a, 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 esteemed, a, a guest from, uh, from Egypt. So, so to my immediate left is a Sarah Crennan, but who I first knew is Sarah Oliphant, who's from Annapolis and uh, it graduated Georgetown in 2005. She was a captain of the women's lacrosse team. They were twice uh, lost in the champ national championship and then a third time Final Four. So uh, it was, she was excited earlier. She was like, Jimmy, get me back engaged with the Georgetown students. So we've had an incredible day, including her first meal at the tomb since 2005. <laughs> yes. But she's met a, a array of students and faculty today, so it's great. She's got a really cool job as head of a content for Yahoo Sports, and she's got 90 people reporting to her, and we're, we're going to dive into each one of the responsibilities. And then my long, long time friend, Nancy Tillot Hubacher. <laughs> long, long, long time. You guys don't know some of you, but I used to DJ weddings. I DJ like 500 weddings to pay off my grads. <laughs> I DJed her wedding. And my parties. 
Oh, all your parties. Before the wedding, but yeah. Yeah, but I didn't get paid for the <laughs> We parties. were going to have video for everybody later, so that's yeah. going to be fun. <laughs> and she was on a Madonna before anyone in the 80s. I mean, <laughs> seriously, a hardcore Madonna. She loves to dress. She's probably one of the best dressed executives in the NFL. Mm. Seriously. Yeah. Okay. And we'll that, talk that, that makes up for aging me for the Madonna thing. And we'll talk about <laughs> how many pairs of shoes she takes on a one-night road trip, which is true. I'll talk about that. <laughs> Right, and then Patty, who I, who I just met, is one of the marketing partners for the Redskins, so we thought it'd be great to have someone on the buy side, and for Patty, who's owned our company for 32 years, yes. PMSI, and yes. talk about why they're doing sponsorship, why you, why you do a sponsorship with the Redskins, and wh wh why that drives. And then Becca, who's uh, the vice president of marketing for the Washington Wizards, and she's been with both the Mystics and the Wizards for f 14 years. So I, I work closely with Monumental Sports and the Wizards, especially right now with uh, Rui Hachimura. We're doing a lot of cool things in Japan. One of the owners and team presidents going to Tokyo uh, on Saturday. So it's been great working with Becca recently. And uh, it just, it's just great to have this, uh, this lineup here. So I want to, because we have four, we only have 45 minutes, we want to sort of make this fast pace. So just real, real quick uh, to each of you, if you could do it in about 90 seconds. Nancy will never do it in 90 seconds, but we'll try. <laughs> but, but Sarah, like, you, you have this great, cool job. Yahoo Sports, massive, you know, internet giant. You guys uh, owned by Verizon, the major player. Can you tell the audience what your primary responsibilities are? Yeah, I, I, the way my quick pitch is, I manage creators. Um, I manage a team of people that every day they're excited about putting an idea out into the world because you know we believe it's the best way to reach a sports fan. And so when, it, when I boil down and eliminate all the stuff that's ancillary to that, it's really about um, creating great experiences for sports fans. So what I loved about Sarah today, I asked her if she'd meet with some students. So she actually met with a number of the field hockey lacrosse players and was, was paying it forward. And she's opened the invitation, if you're in New York, to come visit their really cool offices on, on Broadway in New York City. Nancy, Nancy, Nancy. Hey, how many Redskins fans in the room? Uh, come on, Wow's here, right? <laughs> oh, come on, okay. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, I have been a privilege to be with the Washington. Thank you for having me. Oh, this is the thrill to be here today. I have been with the Washington Redskins going into my 20th season. Some of these students were born 20 years. Yeah, ago. Well, yeah. You weren't maybe born when I was thinking. Well, we'll get, we'll get in that, uh, into that later. But uh, I uh, started. This was my third job out of college, and um, but the the longest tenure I've had with any uh, opportunity I've had. And, and candidly, it's the best job that I've had. I'm very passionate about it. I know some might wonder, how's it going right now? And I, I can tell you, uh, it's cyclical in sports. It goes, you know, you've got your highs and lows. But the, the NFL is a powerful brand. I'll make one little quick, uh, and my responsibilities with the team, I manage uh, marquee partnerships in that uh, maintain the relationships, obviously sell, can you give a, a couple examples? Some so of your big partners. So revenue. Oh, Pat, well, I don't get to work with Patty, but we yeah. love Patty. She's yeah. got some another account executive that works with her. But some of the partners that I work with would be Anheuser Busch, Bank of America, NBC, Microsoft, McDonald's. So some of the big big brands, uh, you know, as far as the and account. some of these are seven figure amounts. A, a significant, uh, yeah, a good number of them are seven figure accounts, and they run from uh, anywhere from three to five years. With that said. It's, it's interesting because, of course, you guys are watching sports a little bit. Again, clearly not all of you are Redskin fans in here. So you probably you follow your teams and you see what they're doing on the field. Uh, I will tell you, it's probably a surprise maybe to all of you, that the value of the Washington Redskins is uh, we're, we're seventh in uh, revenue as far as value in, in the NFL out of 32 teams. Uh, and a lot of the teams that are ahead of us have brand new stadiums. So it's, it, it, you know, there's a, there's a, it's a legacy brand, 87 years strong. Uh, our fan base, uh, you know, kind of makes us who we are. But the, the partnerships contribute to that revenue. And so my job, back to my job, I uh, manage the partnerships. I manage the, the retention of those partnerships in, you know, in good and bad times and make sure that the relation, that we deliver a best in class relationship. Regard, I don't control Nobody comes to my office from the football side and said, you know, what, what do you think for this weekend? No, I wish they would do, but they, they don't do that. Um, but, and I have, I have some opinions. But um, the, the bottom line is it's, it's the NFL. It's uh, not one of the 32 teams in the NFL last year did not increase in value, not one. Uh, given some of the, the, the buzz that was out there about ratings and that kind of thing, the average growth was anywhere from 5 to 20% revenue growth. 
uh, last year. So we're feeling very good about where we are. And the, and the Redskins in, in that group were 10%. So I'm part of that process. Yeah, so I mean, we're in the business school. At the end of the day, sports is all about revenue, the bottom line. And so what's interesting, the Redskins have not been in the Super Bowl since 1992. Thanks. Yet they're one of the <laughs> 10 most valuable sports franchises in the world. And really, it's based on a multiple of revenue. And one thing the Redskins have done brilliantly is their marketing sponsorships. Uh, including signage for the stadium with, with FedEx and so forth. So it's important. Right. So a perfect segue to Pat. I told you, Nancy, no over under 30, 90 seconds. Okay. <laughs> so, so Patty, tell us about PMSI. Like, what drove you to want to do a partner? You've been partners with the Redskins for the past four years. Yes. Well, what are the reasons behind that? Well, PMSI is um, Pest Management Services. Sorry about my voice. I woke up this morning with no voice, so I'm kind of happy that I kind of have this one, even though it sounds horrible. So just bear with me. Um, PMSI is Pest Management Services. I'm a woman-owned pest control company that services Maryland, D.C., West Virginia, Virginia, Pennsylvania. And, um, you know, when I took over the business 32 years ago, we had 6,000 clients at that time, and I thought, oh, my gosh, this is insane. This is so huge. This is wonderful. This is going to, you know, I'm going to be able to retire when I'm 30. Well, no, that didn't happen. Um, <laughs> but what we did do is we went into the commercial side of the business. And we also, because I'm a woman-owned business, I think a little differently. And I'm in a man's industry, so I have to think a little differently to stick out. And um, what I decided to do was pick a sports team and become a, a partner with. And the first team that I picked was the Washington Redskins four years ago. And what happens with that and with that brand is become, you know, you, you become recognized. It's very easy, actually. And so when that happened, then I was like, you know what? This is kind of cool. Let's keep going. So we're also partners with the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, we're also partners with the Wizards, the Mystics, the Capitals, the Chesapeake Bayhawk lacrosse team who just won the championship also. Can we pitch you on a Georgetown Hoyas sponsorship for women's basketball? Let's do it. There you who go, do I folks. talk to? Who do I talk to? <laughs> who do I talk to? That you right there? There we go. There we go. Um, so I've been in, the, in with sports for quite a while now. And you know when you start doing it, you have no idea what you're getting into. And then when you see that it works, and you see that I'm recognized at FedEx Field, and then I'm recognized at Capital One Arena, and then the next thing you know, people are calling me saying, you know, I went to the Redskin football game, and you're on the screen, that's so cool. And then I went to see a concert, and you were on the screen, and that's so cool. And then I was going over the bridge, and I saw your, your um, banner-wrapped vans that we do for all of our teams for the Baltimore Ravens. That's so cool. Like, what, you guys are everywhere. You know, we are kind of everywhere. Um, we went from 6,000 clients to 68,000 clients. Wow. Wow. So that's where we are right now. The sports sponsorship works. Yes, it totally works, 100%. Like Nancy said, it's the NFL. You can't go wrong. You know, I have two of 32 teams. That's kind of crazy. You know, I'm not Terminex. I'm not working. I'm not Ecolab. You know, I'm PMSI, woman-owned business. So that, that makes me excited every time I say that, um, as well as being partners with all of the other DC powerhouse sports teams. Um, you know, the Capitals won. Right? The Mystics won. Right? Yeah. Chesapeake Bayhawks won. So I have some winning teams here that I'm partners with. It's exciting. You know, we're, we're waiting on this one. Wait, wait. We're waiting. We're waiting on this one. <laughs> so, um, you know, Raven's looking good. Sorry. Mm. But, um, <laughs> you know, partners are partners. But, no, it's, it's a great thing to do. Uh, not many people in my industry do it. And I think that's why I'm, I'm successful because I do go outside the box. I do think a little differently, and I'm willing to take risks. And clearly, my, my risk worked. Um, Thank you, Patty. You're welcome. So, so Becca, so it's interesting, because she works for the family, right? So many of you know Ted Leonsis uh, is the majority owner of the Wizards and Caps and Mystics and Team Liquid and Capital One Arena, who's my longtime mentor and close friend, who's given so much to, to Georgetown University. A bark tank is tomorrow night. I think he donated 1.5 million more money for we work, and his son Zach got his MBA here. His daughter went here. So Georgetown's really, really, um, you know, we have so many of our students intern for Monumental Sports. It really is a family. And so, Becca, you've had a great ride of 14 years, and you know how important ownership, top-down management. You have such a great ownership group. 
Definitely. And so t tell us a little bit about what, what you do for the Wizards now and what work you did with the Mystics. Yeah, so I'll, I'll back up. So I actually interned when it was Washington Sports. So it was interesting. It was a different ownership group. And then I started full time. And at that time, it was Lincoln Holdings. So it was um, Ted overseeing the Capitals and the Mystics. And then when we merged in 2011 and became Monumental Sports and Entertainment, um, still stayed on the marketing side and added in the Wizards. Um, and then worked on two AFL teams, um, our GoGo. -Go, Capital City GoGo, -Go, which is our G League team, which we launched last year. Um, but Ted has been great. The company has grown so quickly. Um, also work on our eSports, our Wizards District Gaming um, for the NBA. So um, all of these things, um, we've grown quickly. We've just recently gone through some restructuring. Um, so focusing on Wizards only moving forward. Um, but Wizards marketing includes our community relations group, our digital group, so all of our website, our social media, our fan development. Um, huge support of ticket sales and the, the revenue side, so creating sponsorable platforms and driving ticket sales. Um, we've got a lot of tickets to sell this year. Fantastic, fantastic. So I, I have a, a question. You know, sports has always been skewed so heavily toward males, and the female market is becoming ever more important to the leagues and the teams and media companies and, and marketing partners. So can you tell us, you know, for each of you, the Yahoo Sports, I mean, you guys, you guys are massive, and in terms of targeting your demographics, I mean, you guys are, it's great because you're on mobile, but you're also on the desktop, right? And, and I mean, Sarah has a big group of 90 people, and the video is very, very important to you. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit how important the, the female market segment is? Yeah, of course. So, um, you know, just as, as a strategy, I believe that if you want an audience, you need to re reflect that point of view. You need to look like them. You need to relate like who you would like to have visit your products. So one of the first things I did was spend a lot of time recruiting. And I spent a lot of time recruiting top talent um, that are journalists that you know had, had been on video, had the ability to wrap their voice around sports in a really unique way. So primarily, they are great at their job. And then the sub bullet is, they happen to be women. And so that was really the first effort is I hired Hannah Kaiser against MLB, Kimberly Martin, who used to be a beat reporter for the Redskins, uh, the Bills, and the Jets. And um, she was working at the Washington Post. She joined us for the NFL. Uh, an amazingly dynamic woman named Sirat Sohi, who is covering the NBA for us. And um, she's in the process of moving to LA from Canada, where she did a great job covering the Raptors. And can I get a plug in since we have the women's basketball? So Swin Cash is one of the all-time great players. I a younger sister yes. me has just excelled when she retired and now she's one of you, was did a great job last year for yeah, your she NBA. She worked show. on an MBA show for us. So and now, and now she works for the Pelicans, one of the female VPs of working for you know NBA team. Yep. Um, so she was she was amazing talent, but also, you know, I appointed a head of social who's a woman named Brianna Duca. Um, I appointed a creative director who's a woman, a woman named Amber Matsumoto. And so initially for me it was, okay, I need my team to be right. I need the composition to be right. And I really cared about the composition of, in order to build a pipeline for more executives, in order to build a pipeline for more leaders, in order to build more faces into media that reflect the audience we want to have, I have to change some things. And so that was the initial effort. Um, and then going from there, I really think the way to get more viewership that, uh, that, are, that is both a different demo than we have, but also you know, cares about women's sports specifically, is to tell the stories, is to be able to talk to and connect to those audiences in a different way. And so we have started doing that with the Women's World Cup and with many of the follow-up stories around viewership and the global nature of that audience and of that engagement. Um, and continue, I mean, I think Deladon and what she did, the fact, like, I barely have a back injury and think it's hard to jog, and the fact that she played with herniated discs, like, blows my mind. Um, and so to, to the extent that we can make these characters in sports, you know, superheroes the way, you know, we have LeBron and KD and Kawhi and, you know, uh, OBJ and, you know, that's what we need to do, and so that's really where I've started to focus um, our individual coverage. Uh, and I, I tell my students all the time, but the fact that you know so, social media so well is very important to older execs who don't understand that. Mm -hmm. But today, Sarah asked, like, how, how do your students use TikTok? So maybe we'll talk about that later in the session. Or maybe we'll all do a TikTok at the end of this session. <laughs> yeah. Coach G, you know what the TikTok is? You she got knows. a 10 year old. <laughs> so, 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 Nancy. Um, you know, so for a long time, NFL was 80% male, 20% female. 
it's skewed more like 64, 36, but the Redskins have been a leader, and a lot of your owner's wife got breast cancer. She was really the, behind the breast cancer awareness and growing that. So can you tell us how important, because it's very important, the, the female market to the Redskins. I will say that Tanya was an advocate and a champion for breast cancer awareness in the NFL because every, you know, the players have moms, sisters. Uh, t but Tanya was an advocate, I want to say, and Stephanie's going to keep me honest, I think she was an advocate for 10 years before she was diagnosed wow. with, mm -hmm. with breast cancer. So she, she kicked off the Think Pink campaign, was the first uh, national chairperson for it, and obviously lived it. And it can't, again, she took this on before she even knew it was an issue for her, which is, which is wow. tremendous. Um, one of the other things we've done, and, and Tanya spearheads this too, is the, um, the WOW, uh, the, well, yeah, right over there, the uh, Women of the Washington Redskins. It is it's something that was important to our ownership, given that, and, and again, Stephanie, keep me honest, I believe uh -huh. that within the NFL, of the 32 teams, uh, we are in the top five or three with that, that skew, um, very, very close to 50-50 female fan base. So with that said, we knew we had to do something and quickly, quickly grew from the youngest um, female fan base or the, the women's, women's club fan base, uh, the, the newest one to the largest one within, I think, a two, with two year span. So I think our numbers today, as far as the fan base are 150, is it, give me, am I rounding up for a while? 176,000 women and, wow. and they are avid and very active very knowledgeable fans, so we we bring them out to, and I, I give Stephanie credit because we have done so many events. I think what do you mean, five events in the last two weeks or something? Um, but when we have there, it's it's free to be part of that membership. It connects you to the team. They get events and experiences like getting coached by Ryan Kerrigan and like doing a kind of a player for a day event you know, topped off with a little wine reception after. That's a big draw, too. We're doing the same uh, thing tonight. Oh, yay, okay. <laughs> Except for that's the a, students. That's a good wow model. Only for the faculty and uh, uh, grad right. students. <laughs> Everybody that's, yeah, legal. Um, but it's, um, the, the, the fact is we recognize that it's a fan base that is a knowledgeable, engaged, active, avid fan base. And so uh, we're very pleased to have Stephanie on board running, running the event, and it's been Fantastic. So we, we, not every t team has it. There are probably, I think, the Packers. There are a couple other teams that are a little bit ahead of us, but it's been a fantastic win for us. So before I move on real quick, how many pairs of shoes did you bring on that one-night trip to St. Louis to play the Rams? Because I heard... Wait, you mean out L.A.? When we went... I heard you went to the Midwest. You had like six pairs. Six pairs of shoes for one. Working night out trip. options. What if the weather's bad? You gotta have the hunter <laughs> um, uh, Yeah, they do have a rule about me on the on the, the baggage uh, yeah, rule. But I, you two don't, suitcases for two yeah, days. You don't want to get there. into that. So, so uh, also one one thing uh, when this uh, wraps up at six fifteen, we have a lot of food here. So thank you to the Redskins and the McDonough School of Business. We have a lot of game food. We have pizza, hot dog. We have, Paisan, we have to plug Paisano's the official. Oh, Paisano's pizza. Official, yeah. official pizza of the Washington Redskins. <laughs> so, so we have a lot of food here for you guys uh, at 650. So Patty, t tell us about your, your 68,000. Your and a WOW member. I am a WOW member. The yeah. segmentation between the male customers, female customers. Well, um, with my business, of course, being a, a partner, um, I am involved in the WOW um, part of it because, you know, first of all, it's fun. Second of all, um, before, I think before I even was even a partner, I was a member of it um, just because of the fun things that they do and the events that they do. Uh, when I think of what's going on in the industry right now with the number of women in, in the sports industry, not just watching games, but actually working in the industry, um, I think back when I was a child, and I don't remember having that many role models in the women's sports. I'm, I was thinking back, I'm like, hmm, who was it that I really looked at? And you know, I have a daughter who played three sports in high school, and you know, she had a couple here and there. But now, I mean, I think the presence is huge, especially with you know the Mystics winning and and the World Cup. And it gives our kids today and our grandchildren today, I think, are going to grow up with people that they can look up to, um, female sports players that they can look up to that I didn't have. And I see that the industries have changed with, with having the WOWs. Um, and speaking of the Mystics, one of the reasons that I became partners with the Mystics is because um, their fan base is a lot of women. And I'm not talking about 
like normal women that sit like this and watch a game. These women are crazy. <laughs> you know, they come to every game. They are loyal. Uh, when I do an activation there, it, the place goes crazy. It's like we have this really silly game that we do at halftime during Mystic, Mix, Mystic Games, and when they brought it to my attention, I was like, that is not going to work. It is the best thing ever. We actually have adult people dressed in roaches, and they play musical chairs. <laughs> and it is the funniest thing that I have ever seen. And, and the involvement of the fans at that you know, one-minute little thing that's going on in the middle of the court, these fans go crazy over that. Um, I would never have thought of that. I would never have approached it that way. But it's great. And um, like I said, it's just the, the fan base for the mystics. You know, the women there is just crazy. I have an idea, Coach Howard. Maybe we can do a PMSI sponsored mystics fan club night, one of your games, and maybe uh, the women of Washington. Right? Uh, yeah. And then we invite yes. the Mystics, yes. Mystics fans who yes. supported the Mystics, the championship, mm -hmm. have them come here and support our, our ladies. That's from, a cool idea. Right mm -hmm. on the Big East games. It would be great. Like oh, I Becky, said, crazy. You, you guys have, I mean, the demographics is so fascinating and monumental because you have the Wizards fans, certain demographics, mm -hmm. and the Caps fans are very different. You're sold out for the year. Mm -hmm. Then you have the Mystics, which are different. Then you have the, the G League, and you're playing in Capital One Arena, but you're playing in the new entertainment sports arena. You also have the arena at, at George Mason. So tell us how important the female market is overall to Monumental. Yeah, um, as Jimmy mentioned, it's, it's so different. Um, we do find that on the Wizard side, we skew more female than like the Caps um, fans, just kind of a different, different database. But Because you had a go-go concert after the Mixed Wizards game last Friday, which we you would do. not have had at a Caps game. <laughs> we do, we do. We, so we do some post-game concerts. Um, and we, we um, coming up in February, we're trying to appeal to the ladies. We've got um, Mace and Drew Hill, so um, a little R&B action. Um, they're back that night. But um, no, we, um, we've tried different things. The Caps have Club Scarlet, which is their women's club, similar to the Redskins, probably modeled after them. Um, and they, they can sell out like this with the different events that they do, and it's become a, a, a sellable asset for them. Um, on the Wizards, we have a Club W, um, but a little bit different, not nearly as big, um, trying to really move away from the um, X's and O's of the court model, but like what do the women really want to talk about? Like come and break down some film and kind of just a different, different approach there. Um, but. We also start young with Kids Club and all the way up, but um, Nike is sponsoring a Game Growers initiative right now that we've partnered with them on, and they're targeting girls ages 6 to 14, and how do we get them to continue to play sports and not drop out? So really from a young age, you know, through the Mystics fans who are a little bit more senior, um, engaging at all levels. Mm -hmm. Great, fantastic. So I know uh, Dr. Hamilton and Dr. Grant will be happy with this question. So analytics is becoming ever more important to the to the marketing world, and you know when you when when you're running some a commercial on TV or radio, they can't really tell you who, who's watching, right? But with mobile, everything changes because once you download the app, you know where the person where they're signing on characteristics. You said so. I mean, this is right in your wheelhouse, right? So mm -hmm. softball. So how important is analytics and mobile analytics? Because I want the students to really understand, because that's an opportunity. And mm -hmm. more and more students, you know, have that opportunity. And we're teaching that more in the, in the business school. How important is, is the analytics game to Yahoo? It is where every conversation starts and stops. So uh, to give you a you very like a very tactical <laughs> example, um, we are the rights holder for the mobile games for the NFL. So the NFL games, you can watch them live in the Yahoo Sports app and in the Yahoo Fantasy app. And the reason why we made that investment is because we believed that one, it was, uh, you know, the world is shifting towards mobile and there was a great, you know, there was a great user experience. There was a great uh, proposition for a football fan to be able to check in with the app and watch your favorite team. So that was the first point. The second point was, um, we believed it would drive metrics around everything else we were doing. That if we could get you in for a football game, you might stay and watch a video or read an article or share a clip, or you might just like our brand more. And you might, might decide to follow Yahoo Sports or decide you know, to make us the source that you come to um, for your news or information. So I think it was a great, um, it was a great both experience in terms of what, what the core goal was, which is give a different way to engage with your football content uh, or the live games. And then we had all these other experiences and metrics that we saw 
continue to go up. And you know, from there, we're continuing, we're in the midst of a five-year deal. So um, when we look at, OK, how do we create a content plan for next football season, it will start with the outcomes of what our user, consumers did for this season. Thank you. By the way, speaking of football, football players, I got one of my mentees from Ace Media and FLPA. I want you guys to meet, because we'll talk about analytics. All right, Miss Nancy. Can you try to keep it under five minutes? Because so, we only, yeah, we only have seven minutes. From an analytics uh, standpoint, <laughs> I, I mean, it's um, we have we have developed a business solutions team at the Redskins, right. which we I think that was just launched last year, and it, it's it's more and more. Not, you know, uh, again, I've been there a long time. So when I first started, it was like, we're the Redskins. You know, what do you want to do? Um, and now it's uh, it's. 100% analytics. It's got to be what you know. How are we reaching people? What what what's the return on investment? How are they engaging with your brand? When are they engaging with your brand? And a, a lot to the point of what we're doing with Yahoo. It's they're on their phone, and it, it's, and, it's, and that's what the students understand. It's, 20 years ago, there was no social media. You didn't have these smartphones. No, no, it was much easier to sell. Oh my God, it was so much easier to sell when I was just doing signs and, and, and TV and radio. <laughs> so much easier. But yes. now it's they, they lead with it. They lead with it, and everybody wants a content series. Everybody wants unique content mm -hmm. that's the behind the scenes, the stuff that, the, that, that you know that's not out there, uh, you know, and they want it to be unique to their platform. So it is, um, and so the, the I, I think when when I first started, uh, we we had um, online as, a, as an afterthought throw-in, and that's going to age me a bit, but that's the way it was. And now it is absolutely 100% the leader. That, it, that is what we lead all conversations with. And uh, mm -hmm. it's been very aggressive for what they want. I mean, some of, the, some of these sponsors, the, the amount of um, just the importance and significance and maybe to some degree the compensation model tied to these impressions and the reach and the viral nature. I'll give you an example with, with, the, uh, with the beer, the Bud Light guy. Um, Jeff Adams, uh, that, that or, or even you know, I hate to use who's the Philly fan out there. It's, I hate to use Dilly Dilly Philly Philly. Cammy. That yeah. was lightning in a bottle. For them. <laughs> yeah, that was that incredible. So based on those models, that's what they want. They want these moments in time, these exciting experiences that gets everybody engaged. It's the same thing that the the Browns did when they when they were able to unlock all those. Uh, the coolers, so all you know, the Browns drank for free. The, the Eagles, you know, so it's that those exciting kind of viral things that occur. They're incurring with with folks engaging with their phone socially. That, that's where it's all at at this point. Do they still want television? Yes. Are you watching? I mean, you're still watching games on your television. There, there's no question. But more and more and more, every engagement starting, or it's it's a lot of it's gravitating right to that phone. The right scary there. thing is, very few of our students even watch one show on any of the four broadcast networks. Because it's Netflix, Hulu, it's, yeah, it's, exactly. it's on demand. You you're, you're on your on-demand schedule, mm -hmm. right? You watch it when you want to watch it, how you want to watch it, and that's the way it's going. And the, but the only content you have to watch live is sports, sports. Yep. and that's why it's the last piece, piece of reality TV. Right. Yeah, exactly. Sports and it, sp sport, I mean, listen, the Niners... Uh, Trying to move on, but my Seahawks girl keeps game. going, <laughs> But this is the Niners Seahawks game. You had to see that live. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was one of the most exciting Monday night games. Yeah. They're going to be, I think, matched up at the end of the season. So that's, mm -hmm. that's kind of, yeah, you know, yeah. that's still Perfect. kind of keeping Perfect. people on television. Yes. Great. I, yes. Yield, I yield my time. I've okay. that a lot Thank you, Ms. Mayer. I yield my time. <laughs> Thank you. Um, as far as analytics go, in my industry, we also look at analytics. Of course, every business does. 70% um, of the decision maker in the home is female when it comes to pest control now. Um, I don't know if you knew that. So what we do is when we started with the partnership with the Redskins, it was all about branding. We were branding, 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 get our name out there, you know, the best way that we could. And in the pest control business, you have to be very careful because not everybody wants to see bugs. Who wants to see rats? You know, it's a very tricky situation there. So we had to be very creative in how we were going to put the message across. And um, so, you know, don't put the signs over concession stands. That would be really silly, <laughs> right? No one's gonna, yeah. gonna buy food there. So it was like, don't put it there, put it over here. Um, and then we had to come up with a, a tagline that, that women or anybody actually would, would look at it and not go gross, you know? This is bugs, we don't wanna talk about that. So, you know, we're defending the home turf against uninvited pests. That's been the tagline with the Redskins for four years. So it, it's about defense and home turf, like your home like the turf, going together, you know. So it's not anything gross, but people pick up on that. Um, women pick up on that. 
So it's not something that they look at and say, I don't want any part of that. It's more like something that they look at and say, oh, PMSI, hello, PMS. So, oh. you know, it's, it's wow. a reminder. It's a reminder. <laughs> it, it catches their attention and they call. I mean, you know, the numbers show it. The numbers show it. So it works. <laughs> I was going to say this for some reason. Thank right, you, whoever yeah, yeah, clapped. Yeah. Two claps. All right, Thank Becca. you so much. Thank follow, you. Follow, follow that one, Becca. Woo. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, Jimmy mentioned uh, the Wizards drafting Rui. So um, a bulk of my day right now is just spent um, with our digital team looking at numbers um, all on social and ja from Japan specifically. Um, you know, we launched a website in Japanese. We launched um, a Twitter account in Japanese. We're working on an Instagram account in Japanese, all because we saw the appetite here in DC, but then we looked abroad as well in Japan and their avid Twitter followers. And then we see an uptick in our merchandise sales. Right now, you know, Rui's accounting for almost half of our merchandise sales, uh, which is huge because we're, we're kind of at the, in the, the bottom of the pack in terms of other NBA teams and our per caps with our merchandise. Um, and then, you know, we're providing these numbers, the impressions, the followers, all this data directly to our, our partnership team. Um, and they were able to announce the first uh, global deal in the NBA with a Japanese company and close to announcing on a second. And Jimmy's been very instrumental in that as well. So once we shifted away, you know, we're looking at Japan, but then we're looking at, well, you know, Jan Mahimi is from France, so let's, let's see what's going on over there. Mo Wagner's from Germany, you know, Jim's got us working on a right. German global plan, so, um, but all of, you know, so not just what's going on with our current fans, but we're also looking at broader than that and, and trying to really make um, ourselves a global brand. Awesome, thank you. So, um, you, you know, one of the things I love about the women winning the World Cup this summer or the success of the WNBA is just shows the importance of role models to young girls playing sports. Like a lot of these female student athletes grew up always playing sports, but especially when Nancy and I were growing up, the girls didn't have opportunity to play sports. So can you just touch on, you know, like you saw today how beautiful the John Thompson, with the basketball team, the locker room, the film, and that's all because of Title IX, right? So can you just, each of you just touch on the impact of the women winning the World Cup and the success of the WNBA, especially with what's going on with the Me Too movement? Sure. Um, well, for starters, I think just the media coverage helps everybody. Yeah. I think, you know, one of the things that I look back on and I'm very grateful for is that I grew up in Annapolis, Maryland, and I played a sport where the best team, the dynasty team, was 25 minutes away. So when I was in high school, um, the the Terps, I'm sorry to everybody oh, here, but Terps. University sorry, of Maryland was on a dynastic spree. They were winning, uh, they won seven years in a row. And so every single player on their team was amazing. And so while I wasn't getting these role models in media directly, I was able to go to College Park and take their camps and learn from them directly. And so I feel so incredibly fortunate that I saw a path through them and through what they had done. Um, and so now when I look at progress and, and how far we've come since those days, I just know how important it is to be able to show those faces and tell those stories and you know, be able to relate, allow for everybody to be able to relate to somebody and somebody's story or somebody who maybe didn't have the resourcing um, or the stability of a family life or just the money uh, to play in all these club teams and rec leagues and do what it takes. Um, you know, to advance your athletic career. So, you know, Megan Rapino is amazing. I just saw her speak at the Women's Sports Foundation. Um, it's, I, I just get so happy when you see somebody who performs so well, and then they also have the ability to communicate so well. And she is not scripted. She's not well rehearsed. She is organic and raw, and she tells it how it is. And I think it is a fabulous thing for the sport. Awesome. Nancy? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the NFL for years was doing, a few years, did a, an NFL Women's Summit at the Super Bowl. And I was so, uh, I just, something that stuck with me, they had one of the, one of the speakers was from e, um, uh, Ernst and & Young. And they, they um, conducted a survey, one of the, and she was a executive, on the executive leadership team, one of the first females on an executive leadership team. Uh, fearless and unintimidated. I think she played her basketball at Tennessee. Um, but she, her point, one of the things she pointed out was, especially for female athletes, is if you look at the women that are in the C-suites now, uh, I, would, I think she said 90 to 
are uh, high school and college athletes, uh, team sport athletes. And so which, which you gain, the confidence you gain uh, as winning with, team, with, with your team on the field, that translates. And it gives you, it, it, it gives you the confidence. It's, it's, not, it's not a gender thing. You're just a, a successful athlete, period. And, I, and I'm going to brag a little bit about my daughter. I remember when she first playing, started playing soccer, it was a co-ed. I don't know. OK, so again, you guys are too young. But it was co-ed. And I was a little bit nervous about her on the field. She's like, they're not better than me. And she would push right past the boys. And I, I felt very proud about that. I mean, she didn't, obviously, she, she um, but, but that, those experiences for her when she was so young and before you got, you know, you hit puberty and you're now starting thinking differently about how your, you know, your interaction with, with, with boys, she was fearless. And I think that that's, that, that kind of message, um, it, it's, for me, it, it, I love it. I, I love that sports message to girls. It's, not, it's an equal playing field, especially for the women, women's yep. U.S. soccer team. Mm -hmm. the, the other thing that uh, I had another one of our sponsors say to me is the thing that he, he went out to a, uh, the D.C. professional team, uh, their, their game, and saw young boys wearing female mm -hmm. player jerseys. So cool. And that mm -hmm. is really cool. And I think that that's, that's something maybe we wouldn't have expected to see yep. awesome. um, in yeah. recent years. That was great. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Patty? You're done. You're done? Yeah. yeah, I'm done. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> Since you talked about your daughter, I'm going to brag a little bit also. Um, <laughs> brought it up. Um, like I said, my daughter played three sports. She's a, a mother of two little girls right now, her third on the way. Um, so I have two, a four-year-old, a two-year-old, and then, like I said, one on the way. And her favorite person of all times when she was in sports, she played basketball, volleyball, and soccer for years since she was five, was Mia Hamm. That's all we heard, Mia Hamm, Mia Hamm. Um, so, of course, with the Wizards winning and, and Daladonna, my four-year-old granddaughter knows who Daladonna is because of that happening, because my daughter is very involved in sports and because she had the TV on. So I just can't imagine, you know, thinking back, when did my daughter first start talking about Mia Hamm? And I don't know how old she was, but she wasn't four. I know that. So I think today, you know, like, it's, like we were talking about earlier, just having role models and the importance of that in a girl's life. Um, my daughter played sports from five all the way through college. So she had that regimen every single day. She had that structure. She knew that this day she was gonna have, you know, this, this time to do her homework and then there was gonna be practice and then there was gonna be homework time again. And it was very structured. And I know that that has, has rolled into her life in the real world because she has, she's gonna have a third little girl or soon, and she's very organized, and she's still very structured. And she's like that with her work also. So it, it plays a huge, huge role in, in your life as a child, as your life in college, and as your life in the real world. You know, you, you keep the same regimen that, you, that you've done your whole life. You know, if you've grown up in that atmosphere, you're going to continue that through your life. Um, and I see it every day with her. Awesome. So it's okay. huge. Thank you, Patty. Yeah, um, neat moment this past Monday. Um, we had a Wizards practice for some military um, and their families, and it was at ESA. And we did it on the, the main court side of things. So they were in the stands, and they were watching, and the, the team is out, and they're running through practice. And Christy Tolliver, who was part of the coaching staff last year, um, right after winning the championship, um, most of the players departed for their overseas commitments or went on vacation. And so she had taken um, some time away. But anyway, she's out on the court. Um, they're running through practice, and unbeknownst to her, Towards the end of practice, they had her come out at center court to lead a dribbling drill um, with the guards. And we put up on the, the video boards like a highlight reel from the playoffs, specifically of her. We played some music like, you know, the champ is here. And, you know, like the players all stopped. You know, she's still there dribbling. Like everybody in the crowd looked, you know, up to watch the video. And then, you know, um, Coach Brooks, you know, announced that. Christy's back, she's part of the Wizards coaching staff, you know, she's a champion, we can't wait to have her. And you know, like all the Wizards players are, are hugging her and you know, all the, the families watching her cheering. And it was just a good moment of like, you know, wow, like look at the respect here. It's not about male versus female, it's just about she's a champion and, and she's a basketball player. So that was, a, that was a good moment. Awesome, so we're down to three minutes. So we're going to go to Q&A. So think about what you want to say. We're going to have a microphone out here in a few minutes. 
Uh, you can come ask questions. We'll do that for about 15 minutes. Uh, and then you have the chance to meet e each of the panelists uh, through the, re the rest of the hour. So r real quick, if we can do it like 30 seconds, 45. So a bunch of students, always trying to help them find internships and jobs. Ad advice you would give juniors and seniors on, on just what you went through when you were like career, career advice for the students. Yep, I would say don't think of it as a linear path and test and play with any emerging platform you can. Couldn't have said it better, thank you. I, I would say well, one thing I ask all prospective interns at the Redskins, <coughs> folks that want to get into sports, have you looked at your own universities for the opportunities first? They want, they want the best for you. So it's mm -hmm. stunning to me how many didn't even think about going to the athletic departments at their own schools. Mm -hmm. Because they, again, they want, they want to lift them up and there's a real like, experience right there on their campus. Uh, so the other thing is experience, tr tr and I've heard so much, very impressive about the, in, the internships from this group. It's the, the internship is a tremendous opportunity for you to identify, yes, I made the right decision, this is exciting, this is what I want to do, and uh, you know, translate into a position after graduation, or this is not what I want to do. I, no way do I want to do this. So I've known, I know now that that's not for me. But I, I think as many different experiences as you can get. I will tell you what the Washington Redskins for us. Uh, I'm sorry that we don't pay our interns. Uh, everybody else does pay their interns. But, uh, it is, um, but, but you, get, you get real experience. You are doing real things uh, uh, for the team, you know, tangible things. The, the other thing is we understand as we, we bring interns in, uh, we, we, you get to understand the culture in this organization, and we get to get we get to basically train you because you're doing real things, and we hire a good amount of our interns that that come into uh, the various departments at the team. So I, I can't stress enough the, the the internship experience starting as, as early as you can, um, and and showing kind of um, the desire to look internally first before you go look at. Out externally. So I love sharing the panel with Nancy because I think I've been saying this in my class for the last 14 years. So I did six internships undergrad and grad. Uh, and when I, one of the first ones I did was you would just graduate from Maryland. You were a sales assistant at Q107. Mm -hmm. I, I, I got I, my internship. I, we and I was an intern for, for Vivian Payne. Right, right, yeah, right. right. And so we interned together. Right. And would, then so I got... I was I got the job. Yeah, and then I went to grad school. I mean, and you went to AOL, so you did really well. <laughs> <laughs> no, the internships matter. They That's do. Funny, Patty. Um, I can speak for the internships at the Redskins because. Um, from being there four years, you get to know every single intern there. You see them during the games. They come into the into your suite. You get to meet them. You work with them. Um, you don't know that they're not getting paid because they work like they're getting paid. Every single one of them. Um, as a matter of fact, they're so good that I actually hired one of them. She did. So I, I kind of stole him from the Redskins, and he's my sales manager now in my Blacksburg, Virginia office. Um, he's an alumni from Virginia Tech, and we actually have the contract and our partners with Virginia Tech. So it worked out great. He's, he's running the show down there and does an amazing job. And I know that it was partially because of what he learned with the Redskins and how hard he worked and his work ethic in general. I had to have him. And, and I, I don't want to just press on anybody's head, but I, I do want to say when I uh, get resumes from folks that are now looking for jobs and I see that they were an intern yes. at the Redskins, mm -hmm. I will call the supervisor. And I remember one specifically saying, well, he interned you, for you last, like two summers ago. He said, do you think I remember all the interns? I remember the really good ones yeah. and the really bad ones. <laughs> but the ones in the middle, I have no idea. So I think it's, it's really, and what I try to tell everybody coming in is make your impact. Make your impact. Mm -hmm. Because we, we, there are so many folks that come through. And, and, and it, again, like I say, we hire, we hire the interns. We did not hire the guy he didn't remember. So just FYI. Mm -hmm. Sorry, right, go right. ahead. Yeah. Wrap it up with you, and then we'll go um, to Q&A. Real quick, uh, write the thank you note or the thank you email, number one. And then number two, clean up your social media. Like, do yes. not come in and interview, and then I open up your Twitter first thing, and it's, you know, something crazy. So <laughs> I, I feel like yeah. you can come in and do a great interview, but... Um, just be aware of what you've got posted out there. Uh, you, you, dropped great a great, point. Yeah. you dropped a great line because I, I know when I refer yeah. uh, interns sometimes to monumental sport and then Ted will email me and say 99.5% um, of the student, if they write a thank you, it's an email. But a couple times Ted got a handwritten note that blew him away, mm -hmm. right? And so mm -hmm. taking the time to 
to write a shorthand written note really stands out. So way to differentiate yourself. So yeah. uh, thank you very much for this outstanding panel. Yeah. So we're going to do a 15-minute Q&A, then we'll go into networking and a lot of free food. So if you'd like to ask a question, please step up to the mic and just tell us your name and uh, what your major is. Who would like to go? Don't be shy. Oh, my man right there. <laughs> He's a DC guy, so yeah. B B Billy's a math guy. He, he likes the local teams. Yeah, I was going to say, it's been a big evolution since the, uh, the Eastern Motors commercials with Clinton <laughs> Portis. So honestly, I kind of want to see those back. Um, this is for Miss Wynn. And you mentioned the deal with NEC for the global marketing rights that the Wizards have. Can you just kind of talk about the decision-making process behind that, um, the decision, and what it's like to sell your rights versus a partnership, if there is any difference, um, how your global marketing efforts have changed since the deal, and if that's going to be some, a trend that's going to percolate throughout the rest of the NBA and other professional sports leagues? Yep, so I'll start at the NBA level. Um, this is the first year that teams actually have the opportunity to sell globally. Um, normally, we're restricted to our, our marketing territory. So each team can do two global deals. Um, one's a, a larger deal of the two, depending on what's in that. Some of it's pure assets like signage and very straightforward. Other things are more of like the branded content and that sort of thing. Um, with NEC, our team president was really involved as well as our partnership team. And one of the unique things there is they also did a deal with Rui um, in addition to us, which has been great because it's some really good synergy between the player as well as what the team is hoping to accomplish. Um, but I think that you'll see more and more teams getting the deals done. I know there's a lot of conversations and meetings that are happening. Um, this particular opportunity has been unique because we've been able to evaluate um, there's been interest and we've kind of been able to look at the other companies and the other brands what makes the most sense for us you know and who do we want to partner with and uh, candidly you know we're not we haven't been a winning team as of late and it, it's tough sometimes to get those opportunities and this is a great a great way to align ourselves with a brand that makes sense and speaks to our values and what we're trying to do. And you guys hired a Japanese digital reporter, Zach? We did. So, yeah, we hired, cool. um, the headcount has been crazy. So PR posted for a position, a Japanese speaking position. We added two in our productions department, so the video editing, um, on-camera talent. Um, we've hired a, a global digital strategist who's kind of helping, I mentioned the analytics, um, compile and oversee all of that. and. We've got a, we're currently working um, on a, another freelance or part-time role to help out, like what I mentioned, the Japanese website and the Twitter and that sort of thing. So it's been a good, yeah. a good amount of headcount and resources. Thank you. Dr. Hamilton, this is right in your wheelhouse. Do you have any marketing questions or any projects? So it's interesting. We've played the Long Lions, um, which is a, a team from China. This was our third year playing them. So right around the time this was coming out, we had a preseason game um, set with them. And we had uh, actually had built out a website in Chinese, which we plan to launch as part of the rollout. Um, and so um, as soon as the, I will say, the situation with China flared up, you know, from an NBA level down, it was like, everybody, let's kind of lay low, let's, you know, back off a little bit and, you know, see what happens. But um, even at that game, we had some protesters come out, you know, so we had to work with the arena. You know, we're monitoring our social. What are people saying? Are they going to come to our game and kind of use it as a platform? Um, when the, the Chinese national team was in town, we had our productions crew following them and gathering content, but we were very specific and deliberate in how and when we released it and what we said. We do have um, a full-time person on our Weibo account, which is the Chinese social media. Um, and so we've pretty much stuck to game coverage, only very conservative approach. But I think moving forward, um, you know, as, as things kind of um, settle down a little bit, we'll probably pick back up. Because we do have a, some partners that, um, ORG Packaging being one, Alibaba being another, that, that are that market's important to them. And so we you know, want to figure out a way to make it all work. All right, we've got a couple more minutes. If you have a question, please stand up to the mic. Nikki, I know you always have questions. <laughs> Go ahead. She's in my class. She asks a lot of questions. 
Hi, um, my name is Nikki. First of all, thank you guys for being here. Um, it's so refreshing to kind of get a, um, a sense of your story and really how sports kind of drives your purpose um, in life. And uh, for me personally, my purpose, I, I feel that drives me is women's sports. And I'm a huge women's sports basketball fan and soccer fan. And my question to you guys, I guess, is, you know, you're in the, the men's league sort of, but besides the whole Yahoo Sports, you're in both ends, but um, in the men's league, what do you think your responsibility is in terms of leveling the field um, for women's sports as well so that they can kind of keep up and eventually like what's happening now is we're trying to equal um, pay, right? Like how, how do we get there? And what do you think is your responsibilities as experts now um, in that field um, on the men's side, what knowledge can you bring on the women's side? Sarah, you want to take that? Sure. My job is to not quit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, my job is to keep showing up and keep showing, you know, that a lot of times we think we've talked about a bit today, I'm the only woman in the room, and so it's pretty simple, but it's just don't give up. And, like, my purpose in sports is yes, objectively about what we're doing in business, but I also think about what I could potentially change and the path I could potentially pave for other women, um, you know, like yourself, who want to go out there and change the dynamics of the sports business. I also, uh, because that video clip is so good, we have a lot of student athletes in here. You gave some really good points about the importance of student athletes and uh, how the students, it, it helps them in, the, uh, in their career. Can, can you just share that? Because I thought it was very powerful and we discussed it today. Yeah, so I think the takeaway for every student athlete is to have the confidence going forward and knowing that you have an inherent work ethic that, um, you know, that is undeniable and nobody can take from you. Because being able to play a sport, especially at Georgetown, um, and, and handle the demands of the academics as well, it is something that is very difficult, and there, that should never be undermined. And I think, you know, just being completely honest, I know that um, at times I kind of felt the imposter syndrome of I'm not smart enough to be here because all these kids got in without sports. Or, and and it, I let that be an insecurity maybe more than it should have been instead of saying, hey, I actually should have this confidence in knowing that I can handle an incredible amount of logistics, dynamics, and also pressure. Like it is a lot of pressure to play a, a sport and you know wake up every day and talk to a coach and do the lifting and make sure you're running and also do your schoolwork. And so um, I would just encourage you all to find the confidence in saying to yourself, like, look what I did. I'm taking that into the world with me, and this is an advantage. Okay, awesome. So why don't we do this? I know a bunch of students have been texting, emailing me, and they want to meet the speakers. So why don't we go right in to come up, introduce yourself, and we've got a lot of great food here. So again, thank you to the Redskins, and thank you to the McDonough School of Business uh, for, for this wonderful. Another hand for the...